Hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> the name's Wade Motions, and I am here doing a very interesting thing, which obviously, as you may know, it's a tier list, but what I'm doing is that I am going to be ranking Transformers movies, and I'm not going to be alone in this. I actually have a very good friend of mine who basically has the working of a Transformers series himself, which is basically I'm going to be proofreader and I'm basically voice director for him, which his name is Ruby, and I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself since... You know, I won't really do it for him because I'm not going to be his assistant. All right, yeah, g'day, g'day, everybody. Um, as Wade said, name's Rui. I am an animator who's a big fan of uh, Sonic, Transformers, and Top Gun. Probably the biggest fanboy of those three you'd find anywhere. Well, pretty much what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be ranking all these movies from beginning to end, which is including the very first movie that was made and pretty much the recent movie that just came out. So we're going to be ranking to start off. So since this movie first came out, we're going to go with Transformers G1. Yeah, and I'm just going to be clear. All the chains are coming off here. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to be very, very honest here. Just so uh, everyone knows. Well, this is going to be interesting. So if you don't like it, then... Uh, so first we got Transformers G1. Basically the one that came out with the original G1 series. Let's see. Well, let's see. Hold on. I'm just currently reading through the rankings here right now. <laughs> you got some interesting ones here. Um, oh, yeah. yeah I have before we start. So let's see yeah. what we got, which is basically S tier. I love seeing their faces when they see a superior being. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. From the recent Rise of the Beast movie, which is a very... Well, I won't say my opinion yet. We're not at that yet. Yep. We'll get to that and eventually. <laughs> a tier is basically... One shall stand... One shall fall. It's basically A tier, love the quote. And then B. What brothers once? Once. Pretty much from, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm holding my opinions. And then D. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I, I'm thinking this is D. I'm basically below the enemy sanctum. Oh, yeah, from um, Re Revenge of the Fallen. And then D mm. is Sam Run. <laughs> this is D. And then E, you die. Yeah, I love how they're all quotes. I uh, think that's a good way to put them. <laughs> a nice yeah, little spice much. on love things. All of them are Transformers quotes. If you guys knew about these quotes, then make sure you put them in the description of what's your favorite Transformers movie and your opinion, as we're going to be doing our own opinions in this video. So let's get yes, back we'd love to get off to G1. So basically, if you guys have watched the G1 series, this movie basically is taking place like after or? Uh, it's between season two and season three. Okay, between season two and season three. So this movie was along with the G1 series that started off Transformers. So what do we think yes. about this one? Well, uh, I mean, I've got all... Oh, do you want to go first? <laughs> I don't know, whichever one. I mean, you said you were going to take all your gloves off of this one. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to do it with every film. And, man, I... Look, I've got a lot of nostalgia for this film. I saw it from a young age. I mean, I didn't grow up in the 80s, of course, but um, but I do love this film a lot. I watched it, I think, when I was 11 or 12, and, yeah, pretty much... I know it's, um, it's probably not perfect looking at it now, but I think my nostalgia kind of has a bias for this one. I freaking love it to this day. Um, and a uh, fun fact for a lot of people who don't know, um... It's probably got one of the best movie soundtracks I've ever heard. Like oh, the touch yeah, is still my one. favorite. Yeah, my the touch is still my all-time favorite song ever. Like I mean, I love lots of different music from different artists, but that is forever yeah. my favorite song of all time. Boom, 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 boom. You got the you touch. got the touch. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that song's not. A <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like that song's done a lot for me personally, and yeah, so yeah, the soundtrack's definitely probably the highlight for me, but. And, like, my only gripe with it would be the way that they killed off a lot of the fan favorites. Now, I get the reasoning is because Hasbro had to sell new toys and everything. But I feel like they, and I don't mind characters being killed off in shows, but I think they went too far. Like, they killed off too many fan favorites. Optimus, of course, was the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. But I think they still killed off a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> but I still think they killed off. They killed off, I think, too many other fan favorites, like Ironhide, Ratchet, Wheeljack. They like, there were so many fan <laughs> Like, there were so many other fan favorites that bit the bullet, and frankly, I just didn't really think that was fair. Like, and it Wait, kind of took me off guard when I first saw him. No, he wasn't. Um, he was one of the few oh, that survived, because he was reformed as... He was reformed as Goldbug toward the end of Season 3, so... Oh, oh damn, okay, well, never mind. He's speaking nearly, and so well, some could say he nearly died, but, but yeah, I mean, um, but yeah, B was one of the lucky few that survived, along with Jazz and Cliff, which was great, but you know. Ah, uh, yes, the two boys, the best ones. But... Problem is, though, those two ended up getting phased out of the cartoon. So they're not technically dead, but they just got phased down. They didn't really appear much more after that. Ah, uh, damn. All right. So basically, so what do you think the ranking should be best for this film? 
I mean, I want to put it at the very top, to be honest, for <laughs> as for the reasons as I said. S tier, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm not sure about you, but, you know, what do you reckon? All right, so what I think about this film, I remember back when I was a little kid, and basically this movie was still being sold in the shelves, and I was actually vested with Transformers because thanks to one of my family members who basically are really huge fans of the series, they were like, oh, we should get the movie. And then we got the movie, we were watching it, and honestly, we had really great time with it. I actually really liked the fight scenes. I really loved Optimus versus Megatron. I love the soundtrack mm-hmm. behind it. I, I, like I'd say before, I wasn't really a fan of when they killed off the fan favorite characters, especially Optimus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, believe it or not, I actually didn't cry during that scene, ironically. Yeah, man, you was a big fan. I'm just good with emotional stuff. I don't know what it is. Like, no film has ever made me shed tears for some reason. I don't know what my problem is, but... <laughs> That's not to say I don't feel emotion, but it's just like, um, I just, I'm good at keeping my emotions in check, I suppose you could say. Ah, uh, pretty much. Okay, okay, okay. But I didn't like <laughs> of how they were killing off the characters, but they did have really good moments in the film, I won't lie. Basically how, wasn't Hot Rod was the mo- main focus? What? Yeah, he pretty much became the main focus of that one. Like, uh, he sort of, like, he started off as a character, kind of like, you know, the brash kind of youngster who, you know, just sort of enjoyed a thrill. But then, you know, he sort of gets the whole build up to the big leader, which, I mean, I mean, nothing against Hot Rod. I like Hot Rod as a character, but did he have to be the one to replace Prime? Like, uh, they shouldn't have just killed I, Prime in the first place, but still. They, they, yeah, they probably, it could have been dealt with a very different story. But if I have to be honest, this movie, you know, after rewatching it, it definitely was a good time, but... I would say the story would have to be a little different, could have been a little better, but I'm going to be honest, I had so much nostalgia out of this whole movie, so I would say, honestly, S tier for me, too. Yeah, and and how could I forget, we got our boy Unicron in there as well, that's where he started. Everybody who doesn't know Unicron, you guys got to watch this movie to understand, because if you watch Rise of the Beast without understanding G1, then shame on you. (laughs) But yeah, like, so we couldn't forget about him. All right, so we got an S tier. So what was the next big film that came out around, let's say, early 2000s? It was, I think, the 07 film, I believe. The 07. All right, so 07, the basically a very different approach for Transformers, which basically Mm. had very odd designs, which which we can admit, (laughs) we were young. What the fuck? No! What the fuck? No! And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. We all had very different opinions, and back then, the yeah. opinions weren't really, like, big with these kind of these mm. films. So when I decided to watch it, I was like, you know what? I was getting a little back in the Transformers after watching this movie. I would say that this movie was honestly great. And basically, mm, saying, I actually... It was a little different. Oh, you go ahead, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll admit it's a little different. It is very different from what we watched. And honestly, I really liked the live action. I actually really was enjoying the fights. I really had, you know, a very good time with it. I liked the voice, Peter Cullen, obviously a beast. And I pretty much love <laughs> everything else about it. And Bumblebee, he may have had no voice, but he's still the best character. So I have to say, I would have to give it... Eh, I would give it a one shall stand, one shall fall, a.k.a. I think I agree with you on that. Um, like, because the thing is with this film, again, it was the first live action one. Very different approach, as you said. And I know there were a couple of, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it did set a very solid foundation for what could have been a really good series going forward. We'll get to the other films later, of course. But, um, but yeah, it did a really good job. Some of the designs were a bit, you know, but overall they weren't terrible. The designs, like, um, like for instance, like, I felt like Ironhide's design was really cool. I feel like it would have been better if he was red rather than black, but, you know, like, just to sort of reflect G1 a bit more, but that's but just an example. But I, mean, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah, but like I think um, the still yeah, it was a, it set a really good foundation. Um, and like yeah, the story um, it sort of it had its own thing. And one thing as well is that um, this film was actually very revolutionary for uh, CGI because at the time no one had really seen CGI of that caliber before. Like yes, we had seen some impressive stuff in like the Star Wars prequels and Lord of the Rings that came a bit a few years before, but but no one had seen anything of this caliber. So it was definitely very revolutionary in sort of the CGI department. So. That's yeah, sort of another thing that's worth noting. Those were literally the best thing out of that whole film. 
Absolutely, yeah. Like, and I've seen reactions from like a live audience, and everyone's just like in awe. It's like, whoa, look at that! Like, no one expected it to look that amazing. So, yeah. I mean, I won't hold you. I mean, that definitely was the best one. I have to say, Optimus's entrance in the city would definitely has to be the best one out of that old film. And pretty much, what and I can with say us, is that it it basically starts off with Transformers a little bit right, and actually how we mm. all appreciate Transformers as a franchise, especially with Mike exactly. Andy behind the chair, and you know how that goes. <laughs> but yeah like it's, it's it was something new and it did it was was a bit different to say g1 but hey that's what you get with every new transformers show they often yeah. take their own new ideas and everything so yeah again it set a really solid foundation and like yeah i think it definitely goes in our one shell stand one shell fall yep all right so basically a tier now we're on to jesus christ hey sorry to pause the video for y'all but i just want to make sure for y'all to check out my new merch store that just opened up so make sure y'all go check it out it's been in months of production but now we finally got it opened so make sure y'all go check out the hoodies the shirts the mugs anything you see in there that you like go buy it while you still can and trust me i'm gonna add some more stuff this is just a startup so make sure y'all go ahead check it out on to the video <laughs> revenge of the fallen i believe yeah. okay so what do we gotta say about I'm, this? Film? I've got a love hate relationship with this one, I think. Ah, uh, same here. I mean, look, I mean, guys, I get it that everybody's back with the community about Transformers, about saying that this film wasn't entirely that bad. But if you watch the film, then you would understand why the hell everybody hates this. Mm, exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially with the design of the All Spark. Or, no, that was the Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. The All Spark. Yeah, the Matrix, yeah. yeah. That the the way that they did the Matrix. Okay, so here's a comparison, guys. This is the Matrix, and here how it looks like in the movie. What the fuck? Highly different, right? <laughs> so pretty exactly, much. yeah. And the story itself wasn't really all that great, especially when it came to characters and all that. <laughs> exactly. Like I think, um, I think in regards to the story, like lots of people might say, because um. How they kind of like changed the origin, like you know, because in the first film they said like um like the all spark was the one that yeah. gave everything life and everything, and then all of a sudden the fallen's come out and said like it was just the vessel. I'm like, well, okay, you've kind of changed the origin there. Like some could say it was just something that wasn't revealed, but at the same time, I think it's just they've changed the origin to make a quick sequel because this only came out two years after the first one. Uh, yeah, I would say it, but uh, I would have to agree on that point. Is that like when it came to basically you know Optimus is dead again, and you know this isn't the first time we've seen it. It basically was implying to them that, like, you know, the Matrix can save him. And pretty much at that point, it would take him on this huge adventure, basically trying to find a way how to revive him because there's a character called the Fallen. Was he the original character, the Fallen? Uh, yeah, well, um, he's referred to as the Fallen, but his original name from the comics was Megatronus. Megatron. Okay, that makes sense, Megatronus. I don't know why they call him the Fallen. It sounds stupid. But I think it's like, just because he was like a banished prime that betrayed his brothers. I'm I'm not entirely certain either, but still, that's just from think, that's just my. I opinion. think that's what it is, probably. But uh, yeah, but I gotta admit, there, it does have the best fight out of that whole movie, which is basically the forest battle. Mm. Yeah, I'd say the saving grace of this film was definitely the visuals. Like as it's, that forest battle to this day is still my favorite CGI fight scene of any film. Like with Steve Jablonski's OST and. You know, Prime getting up like, you'll never stop at one. I'll take you all on. Like, that was yeah, just so Where, cool. Like, you know that when he's serious, he is whooping ass. Basically, at that point. Mm. So, what I have to say is that, like, the visuals kind of saved the movie in it a little bit. But the story was already being shown pretty much of how they were going to go with it. I honestly wasn't really mm. a fan, especially of how, like, we had, what was it, the two duo, Butt Flap and... Uh, who was oh, Skids and Mudflap? Oh, God, dude. Uh, uh, excuse my French, but I fucking hate those two. <laughs> I, I know. Those two were like, why the f why the fuck were they a part of that adventure? They were just so fucking annoying at that point. I know. Like, I mean, this show's got a lot of annoying characters that are meant to be quote-unquote funny, but those two are like just not. Like, no, and again, we'll see more characters like that in the future, but yeah, I just I fucking hate I, those I, two. I, I did not like those characters. The Bumblebee, literally the fair, my best thing out of those two was when Bumblebee was throwing them out of the fucking temple. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, thank you. Thank you, B. I'm like, thank you, B. You could have done that throughout the whole film when they were fucking arguing. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know. You couldn't have even gone a step further and just ripped out this spot. Oh, hell no. Fuck, it's interesting because, like you said, the, the visuals definitely saved this film. Like I said, like we've done the forest battle, but everything else, like um, the opening in Shanghai, I thought was really oh, cool. Oh no, no, no. Uh, opening in Shanghai best, but the rest of the movie got very bland. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And of course, you got that final battle with Optimus the Fallen yeah, and that Megatron. Yeah, good. Where it had the amazing quote. Give me your 
Some joy. Yeah, I mean, that is, like, the, if there is one thing I've noticed with these films, it's like, well, maybe we'll touch on it a bit later on when we get through the rest, but yeah, um, yeah. We'll, we'll discuss Optimus a little bit further, because I've got some interesting thoughts about how he's portrayed throughout this series, but we'll save that once we get through the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think would be the best ranking for Revenge of the Fallen? Mmm... Um, I, I feel like it should be, I'm directly below the enemy scrotum, but I do kind of feel tempted to put it up for Brothers once just because of that fight scene, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> but, I mean, sound, you can I put it where you want. I soundtrack alone, too, and the famous song from Linkin Park, which obviously, if you guys... Oh, yeah, New Divide. Soundtrack. Linkin Park was such a heart and soul to Transformers songs. It's, honestly, with them being a part of making the songs for this franchise, it definitely was mm. saving grace with the music. Yeah, I'm like, um, I will I will confess, I do prefer Stan Bush and Vince DiCola, but still, the Linkin Park did a great job to sort of match the aesthetic that these films gave off, and yeah, yeah New Divide is definitely my favorite song that they've ever done, so yep. yeah, so that, we'll that's true. We'll I, I say we put in we'll Brothers Once, I reckon. Brothers Once, which is basically B. So we'll put that in. <laughs> yep, so that is next fine. next we got is this, Dark of the this Moon. Movie, this movie mm. was honestly, it was it was almost perfect. Honestly, almost perfect. I actually, I do kind of agree. I still had some complaints. I again, I feel like my opinions on this are kind of it's somewhere for me in between the first and Revenge of the Fallen. Um, again, the visual, the fight scenes in this were phenomenal, as expected. And the same with the soundtrack. Like I'll never forget that chase scene with B sideswipe and. <laughs> not, I nearly said Mirage, but it's actually Dino. <laughs> uh, but I, I, um, I, should we really even call Mirage though? Because that's not really Mirage. It's just, just, just a, well, the thing is, it's here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the Dark of the Moon game, he was called Mirage, but when the movie was released, they changed his name to Dino because of card licensing, basically. Because of exactly, you know, yes. Yeah, I don't know yes, why. but it's, um, it sounds really stupid. You should stay true to their Autobot name. Sure, you can show up the car, but don't really change the name. It's pretty. Stupid. I know it's. But but anyway, but like like I said, that chase scene, you know that you know music, dun 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 dun, like and you know that just it just really gets the tension going, and that was really well done. Like oh, and again, yeah, the fight yeah. scene, you know, at the end with Sentinel and everything, but, that but was the final awesome. Battle, though, you can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, Prime versus Prime, like oh man, that was definitely phenomenal. Especially the Autobots and, fighting back, that honestly has to be the most craziest thing I've ever seen out of the franchise. <laughs> Exactly, and like, um, and of course, who can d deny Shockwave's big driller pet? How oh, cool was that thing? Like, when it destroyed God. the building? This, mo this movie was certainly giving us left to right surprises, especially with the new Decepticon looks, especially Soundwave mm. and Shockwave both being in the same film. So I was like, finally, they got them in the films. And yeah. I would say the designs are questionable, like everything else, but I would say <laughs> that their characters are sort of still there, but in a yeah, way, I like it could be. Like Shockwave was still incredibly cold with his personality, and his design was actually pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, it was. But yeah, and it should be clear as well. Like, um, when it comes to designs with the Decepticons, I think they definitely had the worst lot. Like, and I get Michael Bay and the design team wanted to make them look more menacing, but man, most of their designs were overkill. No, like Starscream man, was like a fucking were, Dorito. Oh my god, dude, Starscream! I was not really liking Starscream back then because of how he looked like a fucking Phineas Ferb. Basically, at that point. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, I'll say this: like, um, his personality was on point, absolutely. But um, and I mean, as a big aviation geek, I love the fact that he was an F twenty two. But um, but still, uh, yeah, it was definitely the design was definitely just but rubbish. What we can both agree on is the tie in game for Dark of the Moon. Oh yeah, that that was definitely I think the best tie in Transformers game. Yeah, not because of just how the gameplay was, because it was entirely almost close to War of Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, but the story was actually mm. really good in that one. From how it was, yeah, because the good thing, and it really explained yeah, the, thing... the missing plot holes with that Dark of the Moon film. So I would say, yeah, exactly, if you need to understand the plot holes, then you need to go play the game. But I don't think it's on shelves anymore. I think it's on. I don't think stuff. so. No. No, but I think you can find it probably in websites or something to play it if you are a true Transformers fan. So we can basically move on and probably say, I would say I could put it in One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall. Yeah, I'm willing to put it in there, I think. Yeah. Uh, for Again, My it still has a couple of flaws. Has to be Bumblebee versus Soundwave. That one has to be the most. Oh, that was cool, ever. yeah. Especially the music. Mm. Steve, you are such a blessing, especially with the emotional Absolutely. moments when them leaving Earth. But yeah, like this film definitely it kind of fixed. It was definitely a step up from Revenge of the Fallen, but again, it still had. I'd still again, it still put the 07 yeah, yeah, film yeah. above it's, it. But... It still had hiccups back then. But I think the reason why these movies really do so well is just because of how they were just taking advantages with celebrities and basic car licensing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, especially with but, especially um... with Bumblebee's look. Basically, at that point. Because, exactly. Well, because exactly. Bumblebee's look kept changing every time. At that point, I definitely mm, my favorite one has to be Dark of the Moon. 
my favorite Camaro. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And um, like the, the only thing that really stayed the same for him was just his face, <laughs> to be honest. Mm, yeah, it was just that was the only thing that was like only still the same. And everything else looked different. I mean, Ratchet was like green at that point. I don't know why. He could, they could have mm. given his original red look. But I know, like, yeah, the red and white, but oh, yeah, well. <laughs> but uh, but the sad thing was Iron Knight, he was the best character. Oh, I know, <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> oh, like, man, you son of a bitches. Like, it's it's funny actually because in the uh, in the uh, Dark of the Moon prequel comics done by IDW back in the day, Iron Hyde was actually pretty skeptical of Sentinel Prime's actions back on Cybertron. And then he sort of, through Optimus, he learned to trust Sentinel. But then, of course, you get to the film, and he ended up, this, the guy that he was suspicious about ended up killing him. Yeah, and then I was like, how come they didn't explain that about why he killed them, specifically at that point? And I'm like, oh, you gotta read the comics, so I'm like... Yeah, that's, like, again, I always, I prefer the comics over the film sometimes, because they really kind of loop up a lot of the plot holes yeah, and sort of explain it. the origins clearly. So, yeah. So, yeah, we had a very impressive trilogy, right? Transformers, Transformers 2, Transformers 3... Had some solid ranks, right? It's all downhill from there. Uh, sh- Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Eat them up, eat them up. Eat In five, four, three, two. I know, you see, somehow the world will change for weight and feel so horrible. Live life, breathe air, way you should go out and do that and feel so horrible. His own sea is not so real, and neither is his name. So, way do us all a f***ing favor. Stop lying to us. Are you going to an identity crisis? Bro, we to go out and change his identity. His girl, they're not even waiting for fuck. Some things are meant to be. So, way go to your room, you're canceled. Leave it all.